All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rukak I want to say double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders at Great Millstone for teaching his word in truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And salutations to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. It is the brother Kabar Yahweh from GMS Hawaii. Coming to you with another quick lesson. And um it's been a while since I did these kind of videos. And um, you know, we got a lot of craziness going on with men having dreams and wanting to uh, you know, express them, you know. But they had that one crazy dude that was with the former head of Arizona, you know, he his dream was very uh just negative and dis uh, uh, just a lot of BS, you know, but hey, this is the way it works. You know, Satan's going to come up against men and use them for whatever nefarious purpose he, he will, whether it be to sift men, whether it be to uh, mislead and mis uh, give men misinformation, like that one dude, he had misinformation. So again, you always want to be careful about dreams. It is a scripture in Ecclesiastes that speaks about a dream is being misleading, being misleading. All right, let me get that real quick. Let me get that real quick. It's the book of, uh, I know it's an Ecclesiastes, just bear with me. Just bear with me. Um, yeah, it's the book of Ecclesiastes, Sirach and the Apocrypha. Well, I got one right here. It says, I got two. Just, and they both in Sirach 34 and 4. Okay, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus 34 and 1. Ecclesiasticus 34 and 1. Okay. It's Ecclesiastes 34 and 1. It says, The hope of a man is void of understanding. The hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false. And dreams lift up fools. And that's what happened with that guy that that's with the former head of uh, Arizona. Because what he said in his dream was wicked. What he said in his dream was basically set up to sow doubt amongst the brotherhood. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Shemel, Shai, the, the apostles, other other elders, other head brothers, they jumped on it and they, they, they squashed it and they used it as an opportunity to edify, you know, because that dude, he, 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 he ain't right anyway. Verse two, it says, whoso regarded dreams is like him that catcheth at a shadow and followeth after, after the wind. Verse three, the visions of dreams is a resemblance of one thing to another, even as the likeness of a face to face of an unclean thing what can be cleansed and from that thing which is false what truth can come divination soothsayers and dreams are vain and the heart fainteth offensive uh, as a woman's heart in travail if they be not sent from the most high and in a visitation set not thy heart upon it so if it's not a dream sent by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, um, through a visitation of, a, of the holy angels, you ain't supposed to set your heart on it. So I, I try to be careful with things when it comes to visions and dreams, because you never know. They're just a resemblance of some things. And so I just kind of want to focus on um, verse 3, where it says, The visions of dreams are the resemblance of one thing to another even as the likeness uh, of a face-to-face, -face, because not everybody's face is the same. So not everybody's dream is the same. And they just resemble certain things. I just want to see that in a, uh, the simplified version, if I can find it. Uh, if I can find it, just bear with me. Um, so like, yeah. This is uh, Sirach 34 uh, or 
Ecclesiastes 34 in a simplified version. This is uh, Sirach 34, and I'm going to um, write verse 3. Because, again, I'm speaking about briefly about the difference in, in, in dreams and visions. Sometimes, hey, sometimes you can get uh, uh, Satan to send you a messed up dream, but that don't make it real. You know, so you got to be careful what you're putting out here. Because, hey, brothers, spirits are on the line out here. You know? But hey, the Lord, which I'm gonna give the uh, the balance of that, um, and 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 Job, you know, because the Lord can give you visions and dreams, and that's how He speak to you sometimes, you know. But not every dream is meant to be put on a platform, all right. And that guy, he his dream was put on there to expose him and to uh, that weak doctrine that he was spewing. So this says it uh, uh the simplified version. It says. Ben Zerat was Ecclesiastes 34 and 4. I'm sorry, and 3. It says, what you see in a dream is no more real than a reflection of your face in the mirror. What is unreal can no more produce something real than what is dirty can produce something that is clean. You know, again, what what is unreal is no can no more produce something real. So, you know, you got to be careful with your dreams, man. Than what uh and um something that is re something real, then what is dirty can produce something clean. Dreams, divinations, and omens are all nonsense. You see in them only what you want to see, unless this is the point. Unless the Most High has sent you the dream, pay no attention to it. All right. So if the Most High didn't send you a dream. Then you ain't supposed to pay no attention to it. But you got to understand when you're being sent something to throw you off, something unreal to throw you off. And when you, something unreal to throw you off, when you're being sent a, a visit, a vision of the most high. All right? So you got to be careful. Now, with that being said, this is Job, the book of Job. Again, I'm going to type in dream. Yep. Um, this is the book of Job. Yeah, Job 33 and 15. It says, in a, in a dream and a visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumbering upon bed. Verse 16. Then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instructions. When you go to sleep, the Heavenly Father is... is Basically getting the download of what your instructions gonna be for the day, for the for however long the heavenly father set those instructions in your spirit for. You know, that's why the scripture says, Man's going is of the Lord. How therefore can he know his own way? Man's going is of the Lord, so how therefore can he know his own way? So, um again, going back to I'm not sure if I ate a bad sandwich before I went to sleep. I'm not sure if I, if it, it was a true vision of things to come, but it felt like it, right? It felt like, because I don't really get dreams like this, that every so often, I get them every so often. You know, it's not something that I just have, so I just feel like talking to brothers about. But it's also, some most of the dreams that, or visions that I had <clears throat> were set up to edify, and that's what I want to continue doing. And so I did think about this briefly, before I did it, that's why I'm doing this, you know, uh, the pre to the video, basically a warning on dreams and visions, because you do get cats out here or guys claiming to have a vision and their vision be totally off and they don't know when to share it or when not to share it. So I just wouldn't share it, you know, a brief vision, you know, <clears throat> anyway, clearly you can tell I just woke up. So I just started recording, and I hope that it this becomes a video, all right? So I was asleep, and in my dream, um, it was me, the brother Kahan, and uh, I was on the phone with my woman. So these three people played an integral role in my dream, all right? Anyway, me and Kahan was together, 
And um, based, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it felt like we was in the Middle East or somewhere like that. We was in the Middle East. I know we were far, far away because I couldn't get home, and obviously I couldn't talk to my woman. So, um, and my woman had no idea what was going on in the dream. So, me and Kahan, we were somewhere together, like in the Middle East. It was like we were being taken by another nation, another country, you know, like one of them Arabic countries. So, if the, the least thing you do in one of them Arab countries, they'll put you to death out there. So, long story short, me and the brother Kahan was together, and then we ended up being separated. They They took us, basically... Some authority took both of us, but um, everybody got paperwork. And on your paperwork, it said your crime, the crime that you committed. And <clears throat> I think the brother, he got away. Kahan got away, but he stayed with me the whole time. He was like with me, trying to defend me, all kinds of stuff. This brother was going out his way, you know, to prove my innocence. And, um, like, the charges that I had, they felt trumped up. Like, it didn't make no sense. Like, I was being like I was being sentenced to the guillotine. And I actually saw the guillotine. Like, I seen it. It was big, tall, black. It had, like, around where the, where the head goes. On the bottom of it, it had, like, a rubber, like, a head rest. Right? And they were saying, like, it was military people putting people to death. That was another thing, too. It was military people putting people to death. And um, they were making it quick, but they let me get like a, like somebody slipped me a phone, but I'll get to that point. Long story short, I had got pulled in, me and a brother got pulled in some trumped up charges, but Kahan got away, but he didn't like leave me. He stood there like he, he figured out a way to get a phone. He figured out a way. He kept telling me, bro, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Yeah, how about Shai going to get you out of here? And that's the first thing I started doing was praying to Yahweh Shmi Shai. The first thing I started doing was praying to the Lord. But it was still scary and confusing because I was like, this shit don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, these niggas trying to get me on some bullshit. So somehow, uh, some way they gave me some paperwork or whatever. And on the paperwork, it was completely trumped up charges. It said that the reason why I was getting put to death because I had debt. I had consumer debt. Um, the reason why I was getting put to death was because um, I had taken out of a I had taken a loan out, and uh, mind you, all this stuff was paid for. It was weird. It was a lot of things that obviously happened throughout your day. Was in my dream, like basically they were showing me bills that I had already paid for, you know, like traffic infractions and tickets and shit like that, and um, I paid for this shit. I'm like, this don't make no sense. Why y'all trying to? put me to death because of this and um basically in the new in a new uh system any debt you had it can be put you could be put to death for this shit you know what i'm saying like it was weird any debt you had you could be put to death for it and even if it was old debt you know because you look they see you as a liability but in my heart i knew that this is trumped up charges they were trying to get me so um the brother Kahan, he had left, and then he came back. When he came back, he came back with a phone because they allowed me to make, like, one last phone call. And I remember calling my woman. I'm dialing her number or whatever, and it it actually rings her stick. And then um, she's picking up the phone. She was playing. You know, my woman, she picked up the phone, and she just said something crazy. And I was like, oh, chill. Like, this is a serious phone call. You have to, uh, I really need to talk to you. And, um, cause it was like I had one out, but then, um, I wasn't coming back. I already knew what time it was. I was like, oh shit. And if you ever, you know, I ain't never faced no guillotine before. So, um, in a dream, uh, I called my woman on the phone and I told her, I was like, look, babe, I ain't coming back home, man. I said, I ain't, I ain't coming back. This is it. You know what I'm saying? And, that's when I had woke up because I knew that in a dream, like my woman was gonna panic. She was gonna lose her mind if she if that if that was the case, man. But I wasn't like crying or bugging out or no shit like that. In my mind, I kept saying like, "Well, at least I'm gonna be out of here quick, you know. 
at least, at least I'm going to be with the Lord quick. And I had a, had that, you know, had that understanding that this, this was, I knew that whatever trumped up charges they gave me, that was some bullshit. And then, um, at the end of the day that, that might be my lot, you know? And, um, so this is in the scriptures, all of this is in the scriptures, you know, <clears throat> they're going to be some beheaded for the belief <clears throat> in Yahweh watching our shy. And even uh, uh, John the Revelator, not John the Revelator, um, John the Baptist, Salakia, he was beheaded for his belief. <clears throat> Obviously, he was beheaded because a jealous woman, <clears throat> and he told the truth against that woman. <clears throat> and her husband, I think it was uh, one of Herod's kids. All right? But they are going, the apostles, the elders, they teach us and get our minds and in the a, in a, in a understanding that, like, look, hey, some of us going to be martyred for our belief in Yahweh Bashi and Shai. But that's okay because there's a great reward that come behind it. Okay? <clears throat> this is Revelation. Excuse me. My voice is a little cracky. It's lucky. Just deal with me. It's lucky. Damn. Shit. Anyway. Um, this is Revelation 20 and 4. Okay. Because this is what these guys don't do. That claim to have these visions. They don't, um, they don't bring out any scriptures. They just talk crazy, man. You know, and they make you don't even want to share it. But anyway, this is, uh, Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw the thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them. Matter of fact, let's let me read, let me read a couple of verses. This is uh Yeah, Revelation twenty and four. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and for the word of the Heavenly Father, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they live and reign with Hamashiach a thousand years. Yeah, so those those some of those men, obviously those the souls that are beheaded are are some of the elect. Okay, who were beheaded. Let me read that again. Because they didn't take the chip. They didn't take the beast. They didn't take the mark. They didn't take the beast. They didn't take the mark, okay? Let me read that again. And I saw the throne, Revelation 20 and 4, and I saw they, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. And that's why when, when all that was going on in a, in a dream, I knew it was because the real reason I was there is because I believe in Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai. You know, it's in. Barak Atah Yahweh Shai is 444 in the morning. That's mercy. You know, because the Lord is going to give us mercy. Okay? He's granted to us thus far. You know? And in a dream, man, I was like, I was really, I was calm. I wasn't all erratic. I was scared. I can say I wasn't. But I, my spirit was in, was intact. You know? My mind was clear. And our brother Khan, he was, he was in there battling, doing whatever he could. You know what I'm saying? To try to get me out of there, you know, and uh, that's just something you got to be prepared for, you know, because Jake in this in this walk, some Jake in this walk, who are not tethered to your how about you shy properly, strongly, you know, that could throw you off, man. That had your mind going crazy. You got to be rooted in this thing and know what you're in it, involved in. And the apostles and the elders, they 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 continue to do an outstanding job. Of preparing our minds for the for the time of evil that is at hand, and giving us understanding that, like, look, some of us gonna have to give our lives up for this, man, and that's okay. You know what I mean? And Yahweh Shah gave his life up for us. There's a scripture that says, one of the brothers can post it. It says, um, "No greater love than a man should, that a man should die for his friends, man." You know. So Yahweh Shah died for us. Yeah, if we have to give our measly lives up for your how about Shansha, which we've already done that, that's okay. You know, so let's keep on reading. It says, and I saw 
thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahushai, and for the word of the Heavenly Father, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands, because that's that's what it's all about. If you don't take that MOTB, they're gonna put you to death, you know. And it's definitely gonna be under the under the threat of death, you know. And some of us will be martyrs, you know. And um so like in that dream, in that vision, you know, that's pretty much what happened. I was faced with the guillotine. They they allowed me, I got a somebody snuck a phone in, I think it's a brother Kahan. Got me a phone and I was able to call, you know, my woman and let her know, like, look, there's, I ain't, I ain't, you know, I might not be coming back because that's what they got me here for, you know. But then I woke up, you know, and it's all a vision. It could be, like I said, I could have ate a bad sandwich, could have had a vision, you know, but it just made me understand that, like, look, yeah, how about my shot is going to deliver us up out of here, you know, no matter what trumped up charges they grab us up on. The Lord is going to deliver us. And in that dream, the Lord didn't leave me. You know, the spirit didn't leave me. I didn't go crazy and lose my mind. You know, even it was, though it was some fear there, the Lord kept me and maintained me. As the scripture says in Isaiah 33 and 6. Isaiah 33 and 6 says, uh, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You know. So that wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Shema is going to keep us stable. Even in the face of some bullshit trumped up charges. Or whatever. You know. Even in the threat of death. You know. Even in hunger. Even in. Uh, um, you know. The time of trouble. The vast majority of our people are not going to have this. You know. They show you. These movies, oh, Christians are gonna be Christians are gonna be uh um um you know killed because they believe in Jesus. Nah. They nah nah. They're gonna be trying to kill the believers of Yahweh by Shun Yahweh Shah, which is the which is the elect. Okay. Not no so called Christians. Now, you, you so called Christians will be taken out too, because you know, this this that's part of this man's agenda. He want the reason to do these summary executions. And that's exactly what that was going on, was a summary execution, you know? And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to bring this out. I wanted to bring some balance and edification too as well, you know? And I understand that not every dream is to be shared. Not every vision is to be shared because not every dream is a dream that's true, you know? So you got to be careful with that, you know? And you got to be, you got to know what to share and what not to share. You know, not everything is to be shared, but I figured, I felt through the spirit, like, hey, that this was something to be shared, you know, because this is a mindset you got to be. This is how serious this thing is, as Apostle Gabar te teaches us. Um, hey, this thing is life and death, man. This is not a game. It's not nothing to play with. It's without saying, Shalom, I'm on to the next.